Twister versus Twister. Oh boy, okay. Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan and welcome to Paper and Light. Twisters is out today, the legacy sequel we've waited 38 years for, not 38, 28, the long-awaited sequel to Twister, which came out 28 years ago in the summer of 1996, one of the all-time best summers for going to the movies. Mason, you all right? Yeah, it's perfectly okay, you idiot. Which brings us to today. Legacy sequels are all the rage after the massive success of Top Gun Maverick, which also happened to feature actor Glenn Powell. Here I thought we were special. Bagman. Hangman. Oh, whatever. Yes, ma'am. Yeah! But here at Paper and Light, we're into movie posters. So let's take a look at the posters for these films. The teaser one sheet for Twister features this dark, moody image of a tornado backlit against a warm sky. A single vehicle is seen approaching, possibly slamming on the brakes because they're so close. This is a double-sided movie poster, and what I absolutely love about this design is when we illuminate it. We can see that the designer offset the imagery to give the entire composition a distorted, disorientating effect, like your head is shaking while you look at it. The title is still crisp with some unique, very effective typography. Notice the lack of rating on this movie poster. While it was being filmed in Oklahoma, Twister was aiming for an R rating and featured profanity, gore, and other content that had to be trimmed out when they decided to pursue a PG-13. Philip Seymour Hoffman originally flashed the camera in this scene, and there's some noticeable curse word replacements throughout. Oops. This thing is useless! I would have loved to have seen the early R-rated cut of this film. It's when I wish I could become a film archaeologist, seeking out gory or spicy scenes that were cut by censors. That belongs in a movie theater. So do you! After the release of this teaser poster, Warner Brothers released a trailer for the film. The producers of Jurassic Park and the director of Speed bring you face to face with Twister. 14 year old me was excited after I saw this trailer. Around this time, it felt like movies were becoming larger theatrical experiences, bigger sound, bigger visuals. Seeing the White House explode or hearing Sean Connery say F was something you had to experience in the theater. Twister even became notorious for breaking movie theater sound systems with its low bass track. If you waited for the VHS, you lost about half the picture and a lot of that sound experience. So I'm either way. So come on. Here we have the main one sheet, and the fine grain of the image adds to the feeling of chaos, distortion. We see our stars, Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt, in distress, running, blurred through action. The tornado feels almost sinister behind them, a worthy villain hunting them. To me, Twister really felt like it was advertised as a dark, moody film, almost horror. When I went to see this film in the summer of 1996, I was surprised to find that it was almost campy at points. Also, a shot that had etched itself into my brain from the trailer was not in the movie. At the end of the trailer, there's a shot of a tractor falling in the path of the camera and destroying it, and it never appears in the movie. To me, this is a lot more interesting than a flying cow. Cow. But obviously, Warner Brothers disagrees because they used the cow as the cover image for the 4K release. It's so funny because that is such a popular moment in the movie. My version would be, in, in the gothic version, the cow would fly by once and then you wouldn't see the cow again. Then about 15 seconds, it would just rain hamburger meat down on the car as the barometric pressure just exploded the cow. I gotta go, Julia, we got cows. When I talk about posters like these, I like to use my art score out of 10. Aesthetics, representation, and titillation. All of the key elements in making a truly great movie poster. For aesthetics, we're asking how good is the design? How pleasing is the typography, the overall visuals, and the vibe of the poster? Basically, is it nice to look at? I think the design of both the teaser and the main one sheet for Twister is really smart. 
There's a real sense of danger here. You can almost feel the wind and debris flying around you thanks to that fine grain. Having your stars in the lower corner fleeing for their lives makes the whole composition really dynamic. The twister feels like an intelligent, destructive force. For aesthetics, I'm giving this poster a 3 out of 3. For representation, we're asking, does this poster represent the film very well? Does it match the look and feel and the ideas it's presenting? Is there a sense of story? Unfortunately, I think what this poster presents and what the film actually is are two very different things. I'm not saying Twister doesn't have darker moments or exciting sequences, it does, but the vibe of the movie is overall somewhat light. And that's not even a criticism, I really enjoy this movie in all of its campy glory, but I wouldn't say that this poster represents that extremely well. Unfortunately, the 4K cover is closer to what the movie actually is. Another cow! Actually, I think that was the same one. In addition to Paxton and Helen Hunt, this film had a pretty incredible cast like Philip Seymour Hoffman doing his best Jack Black impression. This is a fun part, sweetheart. It's the extreme! A manly handshake ensues. And a bit part from future Tar director Todd Field. This poster doesn't really give you a good sense of how much of an ensemble this movie really is. For representation, it's a one out of three. For titillation, we're asking, does this poster inspire any excitement or intrigue? Does it make us want to go watch the movie? I mean, I certainly did when I first saw this poster. It looks awesome. It looks all dark and gritty and wild. There's a chance Bill Paxton will not survive this movie. You're dead meat, Pilgrim. I'll be back. For titillation, I'm going three out of three. So that brings Twister's art score to 7 out of 10. Both the teaser and the main one sheet were used for various physical media releases. The teaser image was used for this tie-in making of book, the musical score CD release from composer Mark Mancina, and this nifty button I scored back in 96. The main one sheet artwork was used for the VHS release, the DVD, and the original soundtrack. This soundtrack features a song from Van Halen during their Sammy Hagar era during the recording of songs for the film Twister, escalating tensions between Hagar and the Van Halen brothers boiled over, and Hagar departed on Father's Day 1996. Hagar would claim he was fired, and Eddie would claim Hagar quit. The one-sheet artwork was used for the Blu-ray release, though it was heavily edited to make Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt a lot bigger. Twister was actually the first movie released on DVD, and the last movie released on HD DVD before that format was discontinued. All right, so let's fast forward 28 years and take a look at Twisters. The tornado is brighter, more colorful, and much closer to the actors. And yet the danger doesn't seem as direct, and the image doesn't convey very much peril. The characters don't seem that bothered by the tornado, stopping to watch, their hair still perfectly in place. I think the aesthetics of this design feel a little flat, and despite the fact that it was 28 years after the original, somehow this poster feels more computer generated and fake. Some of the image blending lacks realism, everything looks a little too pristine, too clean, cold almost. The tagline is clunky and the color palette is muted, almost bland. I would say the strongest aspect of this poster is the reused typography from the first film. For aesthetics, I'm going one out of three. As for how well this poster represents the movie, we're gonna have to check in with our movie theater correspondent out in the field, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. I would say that the poster represents the film pretty well because it's a fairly boring poster and turns out it's a pretty boring movie. For representation, I'm giving this a two out of three. As for titillation, this does make me want to go watch the movie, but mostly because it's a sequel to a film that I have a lot of nostalgic love for. I wouldn't say the central image of the tornado is super compelling, and the fact that the actors are facing away from us proves it's all about that twister. Why not a more interesting shot of the tornado? Forget about the photoshopped actors, sell me on some spectacle. For titillation, I'm going one out of three. So with a current art score of 4 out of 10, this poster for Twisters is fairly forgettable. But what about those final points? What did my better half think of these posters? Mm, it's just okay. <clears throat> it's kind of blah to me. <clears throat> okay, so the final art scores are 7 out of 10 for Twister and 4 out of 10 for Twisters. 
Good art makes you feel, and this original Twister poster makes me feel excited for the potential of a real disaster movie. I love those. I want to be shocked and, and awed in the movie theater. I want a big spectacle in front of my eyes, and this poster promised that. The poster for Twisters doesn't really make me feel much of anything. I think the whole campaign is kind of odd. It's muted and bland. I just wouldn't call this a super effective campaign. Let's check back in with our movie theater correspondent for some final thoughts on the sequel. Jonathan? It's got a grating soundtrack, country twang, and part generic orchestral music. It undercuts every scene. There's no tension. How do you make a boring movie about tornadoes? How do you do that? So with every episode of Paper and Light, I like to do some sort of giveaway draw. So for this episode, I'm gonna be giving away the CD soundtrack to Twister with such classic 90s female artists as Katie Lang, Tori Amos, Lisa Loeb, Shania Twain, and Van Halen for reasons. And while you're rocking out to a song that broke up a famous band, you'll be playing Twister. Yes, Twister. Twister from Milton Bradley. You try thinking of a clever thing to give away for this 28-year-old movie. If you want to learn more, head on over to my Patreon. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you, YouTube viewer, for watching this episode. I hope I've earned your like and consider subscribing. It's a personal favor to me. Thank you so much, everyone. I can't wait to show you more. So the plural of Twister is Twisters. What will the next sequel be called? Is, is there a, a term for a grouping of tornadoes? A gaggle of twisters? Cacophony of twisters? Even more twisters. Flacco twisters. I feel like twisters is the end of the line.